Hi guys, I'm Natalie Norigat. I asked you what you would want me to make a tutorial about and the overwhelming response was figure drawing, especially for people who are interested in being a story artist or a comic book artist. So that's what this video is about. Figure drawing has been around forever, and it's a notoriously difficult part of art education. It's kind of like the eat your vegetables of art. In the US, figure drawing is taught in art schools, but anyone can go to a drop-in figure drawing session around town for about $5 to $20. Normally, sessions last about three hours and consist of a model in the center of the room holding poses, anywhere from 30 seconds to 30 minutes, while artists gather around and draw them. There are normally several breaks during a figure drawing session so that the model can rest and the artists can get up, stretch, walk around, and maybe talk to each other. Some sessions have an instructor walking around giving advice and some are uninstructed. Some figure drawing sessions have a nude model, some have a model in street clothes, and some even have a model who shows up in character with a costume on. That's my favorite. I love drawing models in costume. If you enroll in a figure drawing class, the materials are normally provided for you. But if you go to a drop-in session, you'll probably have to bring your own materials. Some tools you'll probably see people drawing with are charcoal sticks, graphite pencils, Conte crayons, and grease pencils, otherwise known as china markers, which I love to draw with. Some folks like to bring an iPad to draw on, and I've even seen people show up with a whole laptop plus Cintiq situation. People normally sit on chairs or art horses that are provided for you. You might see people propping their work up with a big clipboard or even an easel. People tend to draw really big at figure drawing, like on sheets of paper that are 18 inches by 24 inches and made of really thin paper like newsprint because most of these drawings go in the recycling bin after class. Figure drawing is mostly just for practicing and studying. It's normally not for making art that we're going to display or sell. I didn't go to art school, but I guess drawing big on the page is supposed to help you draw from the shoulder. And I'm sure it also helps with getting into fine details like, oh, how does that vein cross over that bone in the hand? You need to be drawing big to get into details like that. So like I said before, I love drawing with a grease pencil. My other favorite way to draw is bringing my iPad and drawing in Procreate. It's nice to be able to move the figure around the canvas so I never draw off the page anymore. And Procreate's got this really fun option where you can watch a replay of your drawing. Again, there's no right tool for figure drawing, so draw with whatever you like and with whatever you have. Sometimes I just go to figure drawing with scratch paper and a Sharpie. Even if you can't go to figure drawing in person, there are lots of cool tools that allow you to go to figure drawing online. Bodies in Motion is a high quality paid site and Sketch Daily, Line of Action, and Quick Pose are great free sites that you can use. A lot of people are intimidated by figure drawing or they've gone before and they've had bad experiences with it. I used to hate figure drawing. I went because I knew it was good for me, but it was like taking a pill. I didn't enjoy it. Everyone around me was better than me and it looked like they had gone to art school and knew what they were doing. Sometimes the teachers at figure drawing can be really condescending. They can stand behind you while you're drawing and lean over your shoulder or even draw on the canvas without asking for permission. I don't like that. I was embarrassed that when I messed up, people could see what I was drawing. It's also really embarrassing when you're trying to draw a naked person and they're making eye contact with you. The instructors were pushing realism on me when I wasn't even interested in drawing that way. I made comics for a living and I had this cartoony style that was serving me really well in my career. So if you have hangups about figure drawing, believe me, I get it. Here are some tips that will help you feel more comfortable at figure drawing. You can start by sitting in the back. You can bring headphones and listen to your own music. As long as you're not bugging anybody, that can be a nice way to block the world out and just focus on what you're doing. Remember that the model is a professional. They're getting paid to be there. They've done this dozens of times and they're likely not embarrassed by it, so there's no reason that you have to be. If you're intimidated by the other artists, just try not looking around at what other people are doing. Art improvement isn't a linear path. It's gonna look different for different people, and it's gonna feel faster or slower for different people. Don't take that personally, don't compare. It's not about you versus anybody else. Your only real competition is your past self, who you're trying to draw better than. But when you start to feel more confident, do look around and talk 
talk to the other artists there. If you can be a little bit more social and meet one or two of the people who go to the figure drawing session, it's gonna be a lot less intimidating to show up next time. You can also learn a lot of cool stuff about how to use your tools or tips and tricks from the other artists there. If you take anything away from this video, let it be this. You are allowed to approach figure drawing however you want to. You can try to accurately copy what's in front of you onto the page like a human photocopier. You can focus on anatomy and study how this bone connects to that bone. You can memorize the proportions of the noble figure and measure out every single thing. You can focus on studying color theory, light, shadow. I believe that all of those art fundamentals are super important. That's like the foundation on top of which we build good cartooning skills. So yes, you should study that stuff. But... As you get more advanced, and especially if you're interested in a career as a cartoonist, like someone who draws animation storyboards or comic books, my biggest advice is not to draw things exactly as they are, but to draw them the way that you see them. Meaning, it's okay to exaggerate, it's okay to push things, to change things, and to invent things that are not even there. You can make the model more interesting, entertaining, or appealing in any way you see fit. You are the director. You can give the character you're drawing a bolder gesture. You can change their proportions. You can change their facial expression. You can move their arms so it makes a stronger silhouette. You can give them an outfit that you think fits the character or the pose better. And you can totally change the context of the pose by drawing a background for the situation. And you know why it's really important to learn how to improvise like that? If you're interested in being a storyboard artist for animation or a comic book artist, it's just a reality of these jobs that we have to turn around a ton of drawings on really tight deadlines. You will need to be able to draw your characters hundreds and hundreds of times in completely unpredictable situations and poses with no reference images. So as you're starting to feel comfortable with anatomy and drafting skills, and you're looking for getting to that next level as a cartoonist, I recommend going to figure drawing not thinking so much about copying one-to-one, -one, but thinking about building a mental library of human cartooning language. That mental library is the resource you'll go to when you're on a tight deadline and you get handed a script that says something like, the Edwardian gentleman picks up two cheese trays, curtsies, and waltzes across the room. I can pretty much guarantee you won't find the perfect reference image for that online. In situations like that, you have to be able to go to your mental library instead. Okay, I can do this. Okay, I've drawn someone in that type of clothing before, I can do that. I've drawn someone carrying heavy trays before, I can do that. And I've drawn someone dancing before, I can do that. Now I just have to combine them in my head and then draw that. If you've been going to figure drawing but you've only trained yourself to copy what you see in front of you, it's going to be difficult to draw something from your mind. You have to train yourself to do that. Draw the same pose five times in a row. If the model strikes a 10 minute pose, rather than spending the whole 10 minutes drawing it one time, try spending two minutes each drawing it five times. And do it small on the page right next to each other so you can see what you did last time. I guarantee by the time you're drawing it for the fifth time, it's pretty well committed to your mind and you can draw it without even looking at the model. At that point, you're drawing the idea of the pose that's in your mind and you're really doing a good job of committing it to memory. This is the key to simply simplifying and exaggerating the model so that they turn into a character in your drawing. And it helps so much for training your brain to be able to draw something from your mind without relying on visual reference. If you do this exercise enough, you're going to commit these characters and these poses to your mental library and be able to pull them out anytime you want and draw them without a visual, without a visual reference. Did you ever use flashcards in school to memorize something? It's the same idea. You have to challenge your brain to draw without looking at the model to make sure you're really committing it to memory and learning how to draw it. On a five minute pose, try spending the first 30 to 60 seconds just looking at the model without drawing anything. And then look down at your paper and spend the rest of the pose just drawing them without looking again. Your figure drawing teachers will probably hate this because it's like the opposite of what they want you to do in figure drawing. Oh well. Try 
rotating the model in your mind, like 45 degrees, 90 degrees, or 180 degrees, and draw what you think they would look like from that angle. This is a really tough exercise, but if you can practice doing this, it's a great thing to train your brain to learn how to draw something from your imagination. You can also imagine what the model would look like from a bird's eye view, or what they would look like if you flipped them horizontally like a Photoshop canvas. I don't know what happened. I flipped him and his eyes got really asymmetrical. Before you even show up to figure drawing, choose a character in your mind that you're gonna draw the model as. The more different the model is from the character you had in your mind, the better. It's a great exercise to train yourself to draw using visual reference and your mental library. So for that whole session, do draw the poses that the model is striking and use them as visual reference, but then draw the character that you had in your mind doing those poses. Practice, practice, practice. I know, every artist's favorite advice to hear, practice, practice, practice. At the end of the day, the way that you build that mental library of human cartooning language is to draw lots and 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 lots of people. The more people you draw, the more robust your mental library will become. It will get easier and easier to draw people with no visual reference at all. The awesome thing about figure drawing is it's a super shortcut to leveling up your art skills. Think about it. You could spend an hour doing one really nice drawing with pencil and eraser, right? But at figure drawing, you're going as fast as you can doing disposable drawing after disposable drawing, no time for erasing, just next, next, next. You could draw a hundred figures in a figure drawing session. That will level you up quickly. What are the first three things that you notice about the model? Think about if you were gonna see a friend later today, how you would describe the model to them. Do they remind you of anybody? Is anything about them funny, cool, sexy, sophisticated, scary, intimidating, crass? Whatever that is, exaggerate them to get more interesting, personal drawings with a little bit of you in them. People connect more with art when they can see a little bit of the artist in it. So don't be afraid to editorialize or exaggerate the things that you found interesting or funny because your audience will likely find that more interesting and memorable too. It's really fun to draw pretty characters and there is nothing wrong with that, but Pretty isn't an emotion, and people don't really connect unless there's emotion in your art. So rather than focusing on drawing really pretty people, give your characters personality, emotion, and flaws to make them more interesting and memorable so people care what happens to them. You know you've succeeded when someone looks at your art and asks questions about the character. Oh my gosh, who is this? Why are they upset? What happened before this? What's gonna, what's gonna happen after this? Who is this? What are they doing? And how do they feel about what they're doing? I love this piece of advice from Randy. When in doubt, look at the model and ask yourself these three questions and that will get you into the mindset to add character and that POV that I've been talking about to your drawings. Turn the model into a character and try to get into their head. What are they doing in that pose and how did they feel about it? This helps so much to get us to focus on gesture, character, and story, which are three of the things that help people form an emotional connection to your art and care about it. Once you've turned the model into a character, try turning this pose into a story moment. So add a little bit of context, maybe a background or a prop that turns this moment into a part of a bigger story. When someone looks at it, they should be able to see exactly what the emotion is on your character. And based on the rest of the drawing, they can tell what the bigger story is and how this moment fits into it. Let me say it again because it's important. You are allowed to change things, exaggerate, and invent. If the model's striking a pose that doesn't read very clearly, you're allowed to change things. Like if their hand is in front of their face and you know this will sell the idea better, you can move their arm, you're allowed to do that. You can draw their arm doing something completely different if you want to, especially if it sells the idea that's in your head better. Pen is wonderful for letting go of perfectionism 
because it's inevitable that all of us are gonna put down a line somewhere we didn't mean to. And with a pen, you just have to accept that and keep going. Ironically, drawing with pen helps me loosen up a lot and let go of perfectionism just draw quickly and get the gesture and the feeling down. Pen helps us streamline, simplify, and exaggerate, which is exactly what we want to be doing at figure drawing. Long legs, draw the legs first. Big hair, draw the hair first. And then build out from there. Make all of the other traits of the model support that idea, even if it means changing them or inventing new things that aren't there. You have creative license to change anything you want. If the model's skinny or curvy, draw them very curvy, very skinny. If they're hunched over a little bit, draw them super hunched over. If they look kind of sleepy, draw them asleep. Exaggerating traits like that is a great way to make a memorable character and make figure drawing more fun for you. There's a time and a place for hand studies, shoulder studies, etc. But for the skills I've been talking about in this video, it's most useful if you can draw the whole figure. If you run out of time and you didn't get around to the arms and you didn't see what the model was really doing with their arms, that's okay. Finish your figure with what you think the arms should be doing to support the ideas you already drew in the pose so far. On very short poses, like 60 second poses, you don't have to draw anything in the face. Instead, try to focus on overall silhouette and gesture. If you have time for like two dot eyes or a crossbar on the face to show what direction it's pointing, that's enough. Try starting with big shapes first. This is a great way to simplify the figure and learn how to block in a pose quickly so that you can spend the rest of your time adding details if you want to, but knowing that the proportions are already very solid. So you can start with a line of action. You can start with the skull, spine, a line for the shoulders, a line for the hip. I like to do just a little uh, line under the feet so that they're grounded on the floor when I start and I know which direction they're pointing and roughly what the perspective is. You know everything else is in between there and it gets easier to draw the proportions right and make sure you're not gonna run out of space on the page. Try drawing a triangle for the whole body before you start drawing anything else. It's a really similar idea to starting with big shapes and creating a bounding box for the figure before you go in and draw details. Basically, in a standing pose, try drawing a triangle between where the top of the skull is and where each of the two feet are. Then you have the big shape of the body already there. Again, you're not gonna draw off the page and it's a little easier to divide that triangle up into proper proportions than it is to look at the whole figure and just start drawing. Does this pose still read if you were to fill it in with black? If not, what could you do to just alter that pose a little bit so that it would read in silhouette? In general, that's a way to strike a stronger character pose is to make sure that it reads well in silhouette. So once in a while, try filling in your figure entirely with black and see if you can still tell what the model's doing. Try combining features into bold, simple lines, like one swooping curve or one super straight line. Really push these lines where you can find them. Asymmetry adds a lot of human interest because humans are asymmetrical. If you look around, most of us are leaning on one leg more than the other. We might be kind of propping one arm up while the other one's hanging down, and a lot of our facial expressions are one-sided. Asymmetry can add just a lot of human interest. Pay special attention to your character's gaze. How is their head tilted? How open are their eyes and where are their pupils looking? These three things can add so much life and personality to your drawing. Some models come to figure drawing and they bring energy and facial expressions and bold poses with them. Some models don't. Sometimes you have a model and for three hours all that they give you is pretty face or dead face. In those situations, do the best that you can to come up with something more interesting in your head and put it onto the model. Maybe they're striking a cool pose, but the face is dead. You can give them a totally different facial expression that adds life and energy and meaning to that pose. So go for it, have fun. 
Try adding a ground plane shadow or a grid underneath your character to ground them in space. On longer poses, try improvising a background for your character so that their pose has a different context. A lot of the time, figure drawing teachers push us to draw really big on the page and have one figure for the whole sheet for the reasons that I laid out before. But I personally think when you're studying simplification, character, gesture, all of these things, it's more beneficial to draw small on the page. It's great to draw small on the page because you can tell if what you're doing is actually reading or not. If you do this right and you really push the pose and you push those traits so that you're creating a character, they should still read even when they're small on the page. My number one advice I'll leave you with is draw the pose multiple times and push it further every time. See how far you can push it before it absolutely breaks and doesn't work anymore. I try to be very kind to myself when I go to figure drawing. It's hard to put yourself out there like that, so pat yourself on the back for even going. I don't put expectations on myself to do beautiful drawings while I'm there. On a good day, it still takes me about 30 minutes to warm up and just figure out how to draw this model, let alone think about all the other things I just told you to think about. Sometimes I leave after three hours without a single drawing that I like, and that happens, it's okay. I know that it was still good for me to go and practice and get those drawings drawings out of my system. I know that every bad drawing gets me closer to a good drawing. We don't always see improvement as it's happening, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. So be kind to yourself and hang in there. If you're looking for more advice, I highly recommend Alex Wu's gesture drawing class on schoolism. This video is not sponsored. I just took that class a couple years ago and I thought it was really good. 100 Tuesday Tips Volumes 1 and 2 by Grizz and Norm are required reading for story artists. Lastly, here are some amazing story artists who often post figure drawings that I think you should follow and study. If you're looking for feedback on your work, or you're hoping to grow your audience, or you want to network for jobs in comics or animation, there's nothing like posting your artwork online to make that happen faster. It can feel embarrassing at first if you're not used to it, but trust me, it's another super shortcut to getting on people's radar and leveling up your work faster. Try taking pictures or screenshots of your artwork and posting it on any sites or apps that you enjoy. I personally like posting mine to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook and I normally write a little description underneath about who the model was or how I felt while I was drawing that day. Again, making it personal because people are way more likely to engage with it if they can feel that personal connection, not just to the drawing, but to you, the artist. Try taking pictures of your seven favorite things that you drew at a figure drawing session and then posting one per day throughout the week. That way you have a whole week of daily content and seven times more chance of someone finding your work. Use hashtag tags that suit your art to help people find it. Figure drawing is like going to the gym or meditating. It's a practice, and I promise it gets easier the longer you do it. So I hope you're feeling inspired to get out there and draw some character and story-focused figure drawings. When you're feeling comfortable, please post them online so the rest of us can enjoy your art. Thank you so much for watching. Happy drawing, everybody! If I make another tutorial, what should it be about? Leave a comment down below.